Okay, first of all, thanks Larissa for um, arranging this webinar series. I think it's amazing and a great learning experience that you can actually meet and um, share knowledge without uh, burning um, uh, CO2. I'd like to just introduce myself a little bit because I love this play with data um, theme uh, and it's been um, a guiding principle for me uh, in working as a curator of digital museum practice to actually uh, take a playful approach uh, to it, like here with the Europeana Network, where we're playing um, uh, Go Yourself uh, at the SMK. Um, the SMK, uh, as you said, is the National Gallery of Denmark. It has a huge collection of a quarter of a million artworks. Uh, two thirds are in the public domain. Uh, so we have very free um, uh, terms to play with it. Um, I've been at the SMK for 12 years and I was a part of writing the first digital strategy where we committed ourselves to become a catalyst of users' creativity. Um, and the um, program that I'm currently working on is called SMK Open, running for five years to open up and tie together SMK's digitized assets um, for all to use and enjoy. So uh, we've already had for a number of years, years free download of images. Uh, and once we launch our new online collection, actually in two weeks, um, we will have a larger scale and a more comprehensive search function into all of this. We use the public domain uh, dedication from Creative Commons to let uh, our users everywhere in the world know that they have not only permission, but the right to use um, this cultural commons that we steward. Um, and in this work, um, being these, this catalyst of users' creativity, we see ourselves uh, taking on a new role as facilitators in the museum. This is just kind of a graphic visualization of uh, the principle of SMK Open, reading from left to right. We start with the CC0 collection, uh, encompassing all the different assets uh, that can then be displayed on our website through our API and on external platforms and lead to a ton of fun and uh, inspiring projects that other people uh, create with uh, our open data. And I'm going to bring you through uh, examples of that in my short introduction here today. The idea of opening up um, the collection of the National Gallery of Denmark is um, an attempt to democratize um, in the digital age this collection that we hold. Uh, the museum was made um, what it is today in 1849, when Denmark became a democracy. Before that, the collections belonged to the Danish kings, but in 1849, the collections were handed over to the Danish public. And today with digitization, we have a new ability to um, add a layer to the democratization. The strategy that we're working from at SMK these years is called SMK for All. And I'll quote a little bit from it. Being the National Gallery and Main Art Museum in Denmark, SMK carries an important responsibility towards the entire country and beyond. The vast collection of 700 years of art is common national property, and ideally everyone who lives in Denmark share a sense of ownership to this unique cultural heritage. Our work is based on the conviction that the artworks in our rich collection has a role to play in the society that surrounds us, through its ability to deepen our understanding of the world, its peoples and histories. So we believe that the development museums have undergone in the past decades holds the key to engage far more and more different people than we reach today. And that development is going from being sort of temples, mu uh, museums as temples where people come to visit in admiration and, and awe of the original artworks, uh, to adding that new layer of also being a partner and a facilitator that helps catalyze uh, the creative abilities of the publics themselves. 
So the question I ask myself every day when I go to work is how can digitized cultural heritage contribute to meaningful personal experience, relevant new insights and ultimately societal development as we claim in our strategy. So one thing I'd like to start with before I go into examples of creative reuse um, that we have explored lots in uh, the past couple of years is that we have also explored things that didn't really work out. Um, and this picture is sort of the epitome of that. We have done lots of um, screen-based experiments in the galleries uh, to sort of activate people's knowledge seeking and conversations with each other through social media or different online uh, devices. And what we experienced every time was that um, it inhibits people's experience of the original artworks in the galleries when they actually come to visit the museum. So they look down on the screens instead of engaging with the artworks in the galleries and each other, it's also social ambition. So our strategy today and with SMK Open is very much about what can our data do beyond the walls of the physical museum. In the physical museum right now, we don't have a lot of screen-based interaction. We try to support people in having social experiences with each other and authentic meetings with the artworks and the artists. Um, I have a graph to sort of pinpoint where we think that um, our digital strategy really uh, is successful. So the classical museum work uh, lay in the enlightenment and physical area, whereas digitization has, and the experience economy has brought about new opportunities. But what we are learning uh, is that the real inspiration and uh, satisfaction is happening when we can work in the crooks of this graph. And I'll show you some examples of that very quickly. One of the places where we succeed in bringing together digital and physical enlightenment and experience is in our monthly Wikilabs, where we bring together museum uh, experts, Wikipedians and um, volunteer together to learn how to write Wikipedia articles about art history. Some Danish cultural institutions contribute and uh, share the uh, hosting these events and it has a huge impact in terms of how many people actually encounter our, our collections online. Another example of uh, bridging the gap from physical uh, to digital and back is uh, that we work with 3D scanning our sculpture collection uh, in very high resolution, also released under this uh, with the CC0 uh, public domain dedication. Uh, we work together with um, Scan the World. Um, uh, like Wikipedia, it's a volunteer um, effort by people around the world uh, who go around with hand scanners uh, and scan in institutions. And the models can then be reused uh, by artists. For instance, um, if you follow this uh, link here, you'll find uh, a video project that has been shown in the museum uh, at an event last year. I have so many examples. This is a jewelry design contest um, where uh, Shapeways um, and SMK partnered, inviting their jewelry designers to be inspired by works in uh, the SMK collection. The winner was uh, this wonderful necklace design uh, based on a 1532 Renaissance painting by the German artist Lukas Karnak the Elder. Uh, what we did was then make a small pop-up exhibition at the museum, again, to bridge the digital and physical and show the winners um, that you could also buy in the shop and do an art talk with the winning designers and our director in front of the authentic painting, which really spread a lot of debate with the audience. We've had uh, collaborations with uh, Europeana Creative, um, where we uh, showed their culture cam, where you could search in Europeana's collections using your body gestures, the colors and patterns on your clothes. Uh, we had that installation at the museum. 
We also did a remix exhibition a couple of years ago, asking uh, artists and designers to remix public domain artworks and exhibit their remix next to the originals. So again, this bridge between digital, physical, enlightenment and experience. Here are some of the remixes. Just quickly this Hammersway painting, the original, and a nice pop-up, uh, like a pop-up book version of it. Uh, and again, we always try to bring people into the galleries and meet the artists and have conversations and exchanges with them. So we really try to bring, um, go from the digital data and back into uh, physical spaces, whether it be in the museum or outside. We also played with Van Gogh yourself, uh, doing little workshops at the museum where people could dress up like a painting. A really fun time for good friends and uh, families, but also a great learning experience because when you try to analyze the composition of a painting and get into character, you really get to know that painting well. And it really spreads, so this painting was also picked up by a popular BBC radio host and got a lot of uh, traction on Facebook. An example of outside uh, the museum walls uh, is a collaboration we did with the Copenhagen Metro Company where we had uh, our young uh, art pilots do a remix, like a 70 meter long remix of artworks from our collection together with the people living uh, in the uh, apartment buildings around this uh, construction site. Um, so really bringing art into the streets. Another example uh, done with our volunteer art pilots was actually um, in a, a drug injection room in central Copenhagen, um, where the art pilots worked again together with the users of this uh, place to remix um, and create wallpaper for these very sterile rooms where they inject their drugs and really turn the room into a whole new experience for the users who never come to uh, an art museum uh, and, you know, make a traditional visit to museums, but here they can interact and feel ownership with the artworks in their own environment. The last example I have is, again, the art pilots at what we call the Young People's Meeting, which is a democracy festival for young people uh, taking place every year in Copenhagen. And here we did um, a very sort of um, uh, hands-on uh, collage workshop last year, uh, inviting young people to cut and paste uh, physically into prints of artworks from the collection and create collage uh, to explore what it feels like to express emotions uh, about difficult feelings uh, through images. And here are just a couple of statements from some of the attendants. It's easier for me to express my emotions through images or drawings because then I don't have to explain everything. And then other people can make their own sense of it and relate to it in their own way. And here are some of the other attendants. Uh, kids between 13 and 23, I guess. Um, it's like art changes character when you can touch it with your own hands. You're able to look at it up close. It means a lot to be able to hold the art between your hands and touch it. These are some of the impacts that we're trying to create through uh, radically opening up our collection and bringing it to people where they are uh, in meaningful ways. So again, um, we really don't want our digital um, work to stay in the in the in the cloud um, what we really want is to uh, build bridges between learning and um, experience and uh, digital and physical there's a um, uh, an impact report about the um, the project we did at the young people's meeting if people are interested uh, at europeana pro and then i'm done with my short presentation and open for questions 
Thank you very much, Marita. That was really interesting. And I already have a first question to you from the audience. Um, how do you inspire leadership and colleagues to support SMK's innovative work in this space? We've seen exponential and steady progress with the SMK over the years. Well, uh, one of the ways is uh, through having a person like me on, uh, on the staff, because uh, one of my tasks is to be an advisor in digital museum practice, not only here internally at the museum, but uh, also to colleagues in uh, Danish institutions, both in uh, museums, but also libraries and archives um, and beyond. Um, and also uh, the role I play um, in uh, various international um, fora and networks. And, and I think that's one of the really brilliant things that SMK has um, done and sort of taken responsibility for. Um, because we are um, the largest art museum in Denmark and we have this national gallery role. Um, and that brings about some specific responsibilities that other museums don't have uh, in our country. Um, and one of them is to really, um, uh, you know, both be kind of um, uh, breaking the waves of new technologies and, and learning some of the hard lessons and then being able to share that. For instance, all the tech hype that we we really spend a lot of energy on that between 2008 and 12, just doing a lot of futile projects that never really, you know, they, they ended in the app graveyard and everything. But, but we were then able to share our knowledge with colleagues um, and, um, you know, the fact that I'm kind of a specialist both in art history, but also now in, in digital practices. Um, so uh, the museum can sort of share me with um, the sector. <laughs> and we're really happy about that. So um, I have another question to you because I really liked um, that you spoke a lot about where your digitized collections all um, take place. So they're all over the, the town and all over the country. Um, and um, But what is the actual um, chance for you as an institution, uh, could one ask? So why is that positive for the SMK? Well, if you remember uh, what I uh, quoted from um, our strategy, uh, we are obligated to be a museum for everyone in Denmark. But of course, not everyone will ever come to the physical gallery. Um, we have around 400,000 visitors a year. That's a fraction of the Danish population. And we also want to go beyond Denmark uh, as a national gallery. That's part of our DNA. Um, so uh, what we do uh, with this digital openness is really fulfilling our strategy on uh, so many levels um, and um, uh, helping us uh, be relevant for more and more diverse audiences. That's really great to hear. Thank you very much, Maretta.